Christ has done far more effectively. As long as suffering of sin and being remains, I will remain in order to serve. I imagined God um, like my grandfather. In conversations today, my guest is British, but he has spent more than 45 years in India, now his home. He's an architect who's built a reputation not on the grand and the glamorous structures of India, but in working with the poor, embodying their aspirations in his work, in his structures, reflecting their needs and their environments. I'm delighted to welcome Laurie Baker. Thank you. Um, your houses have this wonderful quality of of quietude and stillness, and, and, and there always seems to be uh, a, a center where you, you, you feel a, piece of, a sense of peace and centeredness. Yeah. <laughs> That's been my experience of, of yeah. entering, uh, entering sort of famous Baker homes. <laughs> uh, when, you, when, uh, when, when a house sort of begins to take shape in mm. your mind's eye, as it were, uh, yeah. what are the elements that go into this? Well, of course, the main one is the clients, <laughs> <laughs> or clients in plural. Uh -huh. um, and usually when they phone me or come and see me, and then I say, well, first I'd like to see the site where you want to build. And then, of course, we're talking on the way to the site, we're s when we're on the site. Now, what's your idea of where you want to be? Do you want the view, or do you want to... Uh, have your head in the north or the south or somewhere when you're asleep. And uh, I begin to get to know the client right away. And then I can also see what I would want to do on the site if it were mine. But of course I have to sit on that <laughs> as much as possible. Um, people vary so much. I don't think I've ever repeated uh, a plan or a house uh, simply because people are so different, what you want and what I want. You <laughs> so know, like, like, like an artist creates a, a, a painting, mm. uh, in, in, when, does it, when does the form begin to sh take shape? Oh, I think when I'm walking onto the site, even mm -hmm. before they've told me uh -huh. <laughs> where. Uh -huh. um, it isn't always, I mean, it doesn't always follow through that way, but uh, uh, you Somehow or other, people are able to express themselves, not deliberately, but the way they talk and the, um, you know, the sort of things they avoid mm -hmm. <laughs> talking about, mm -hmm. you get to know very quickly about them and what they, uh, the way they live, mm -hmm. particularly if they've got one of their family with them, usually a wife or, and so on. Mm -hmm. I think usually the wife knows more or can convey more of what she wants or <laughs> what she wants for the family mm -hmm. than the man himself. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you, you were sort of a short while ago uh, describing the, uh, a, a horrible concrete box. <laughs> uh, what for you makes, makes a home, makes, uh, makes, makes for good architecture? Uh, it's a difficult question to answer straight. Um, I think, and of course there are many various ideas from architects of what they think is good and not good and so on. Um, I'm very convinced that uh, if you want a building not to stand out like a sore thumb, it should follow the uh, traditions, uh, not copy them, but follow on with them, that have been going on probably for hundreds if not thousands of years and people you have used the materials that are right there on the spot or within an easy distance of a bullock cart and <laughs> now a lorry um, so that there isn't imported material imported not from abroad but from another area and so they they look as though they belong and uh, i don't see any in, any reason not to go on with that tradition uh, or put it the other way around, I'm very, very much opposed to bringing in uh, things that are not uh, compatible with the local um, architecture. How do you uh, reconcile uh, traditional methods of building 
with our contemporary larger sort of societal notions of development and way the modern city is, is, is structured yeah. and laid out? Well, um, for one thing, the, you use the word development. Mm -hmm. And I think we only put one side, I mean, in modern mm -hmm. uh, talk, when we say development program, we mean uh, progress. Mm -hmm. Whereas development, actually, you can develop um, a bad cold or a, sure. a peptic ulcer. <laughs> 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 uh, so uh -huh, uh -huh. I think very often we're uh -huh. doing that side of uh -huh, development uh -huh. instead of what we mean uh -huh. by progress. Uh -huh. And then where is it leading us all? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, people can't sit in a room without mm -hmm. the air conditioner mm -hmm. these days. Mm -hmm. um, when I came to India, it was 55, not 45 uh -huh. years ago. <laughs> um, uh -huh. I lived in several of the old bungalows. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I'd stay there from time to time, which were extremely cool, even in mm -hmm. the, when the temperature was up, mm -hmm. you know, these uh, very high sure. in UP sure. Sure. and so on. Sure. And uh, they were good you could be comfortable mm -hmm. without all this capital D and inverted mm -hmm. commas development. <laughs> well, let's say, you know, because of the, the, the imperatives of modernization, yes. and, and we are all sort of little cogs in the wheel, yes. uh, and uh, what kind of architecture would, 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 could I aspire to living in, in, in the heart of urban Delhi uh, that would be feasible and possible? Uh, and yet, uh, in, in, in consonance yes. with many of the aspirations yes. uh, that, that, you know, your kind of architecture is yes. that we dream about. Well, you see, from the structural point of view, uh, of course, it, if you wanted a, a five-story building, then it's a different matter. And in a place like Delhi, or uh, Delhi seems to have lots of spare land, though it doesn't really have it, mm -hmm. uh, just because you see so many trees everywhere. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But... Um, you can't afford to have everybody living in a bungalow, in a Lachin's bungalow, well, exactly. for instance. Uh -huh. But if you did have a little bit of land and you wanted to build on, you could build two or three stories using old systems. One of them was just the thickness of a wall. Mm -hmm. uh, when I was first here in Allahabad, for instance, mm -hmm. at the uh, Ag Inns, the mm -hmm. Agricultural Institute mm -hmm. there, mm -hmm. I did quite a lot of experiments. Um, finding out the uh, relative temperatures inside and outside of the different types of building. And thick walls and the, uh, you know, the thick flat roofs mm -hmm. that they had there with the tiled mm -hmm. thing on top. Um, you would only be very slightly uh, warmer um, at the end of the day than you'd been at the beginning of the day. And mm -hmm. by the, the outside of the wall, you couldn't touch. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But the inside, because the walls were this thick, right. <laughs> uh, were cool, comparatively. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And uh, the other thing was, you see, the old buildings, they understood, uh, without knowing any science and in inverted commas again, <laughs> they understood the principles of ventilation. Mm -hmm. uh, air comes in here, hot air rises from contact sure. with bodies and cooking sure. and all sure. the rest of it, and it goes out at the little holes in the top. Uh -huh. The Kerala roof is the typical one, right. you know, with right. these right. ears at the right. top. Right. Well, now, there's actually a flow of air uh -huh. going through, even though it's hot. Uh -huh. In a humid climate, you want that movement uh -huh. of air, uh -huh. uh, and that is enough to, I mean, the temperature isn't uh -huh. the same as uh -huh. it is here uh -huh. in Delhi, uh -huh. Uh -huh. but uh, there's that way of doing it. Um, I have done buildings with an ordinary brick wall on one side, a four and a half inch brick and another four and a half inch mm -hmm. on the inside, and filled the middle up with a lot of rubbish, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, meaning um, soil and uh, sure. lumps of this, that yeah. and the other. Uh -huh. And that does keep cool with the mm -hmm. proper ventilation system. Mm -hmm. The other one is to use um, a simple um, uh, cavity wall, the outside, uh, for instance, at the uh, Center for Development mm -hmm. Studies in Trivandrum. Mm -hmm. I did the computer center mm -hmm. where everybody said, oh, it must be air conditioning, mm -hmm. air conditioned and mm -hmm. so on. Mm -hmm. But uh, I made inquiries about it, and it doesn't have to be air conditioned. Mm -hmm. um, it's better that you have a, a controlled temperature sure. and a regular sure. level temperature. Sure. And that I've done by using the old uh, jali, mm -hmm. not the nice, beautiful carving that we have here in uh -huh. the Red Fort and uh -huh. so on, uh -huh. but the brick jali, uh -huh. 
Mm. Then a cavity, and then the ordinary uh, simple nine-inch uh, load-bearing brick wall inside. Mm -hmm. The inside remains at one temperature the whole day long. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so there are many ways of carrying on the traditional methods. Mm -hmm. um, you know, not being quite so primitive, <laughs> and making Tell it a little more <laughs> acceptable. You, you've been in India for, as you just said, reminded us for 55 years. Mm. Uh, what has kept you here? Oh, my wife. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, it's so uh, the, um, uh. I think, first of all, I came because of a particular need. Mm -hmm. uh, I, um, it was during the war, of course. Mm -hmm. And uh, being, I'm a Quaker, and um, don't think wars are the right way to settle arguments <laughs> between uh, nations. So I was doing uh, relief work. And I was in China for a few years, then came here. And um, in China, one of my jobs, or the main job I'd had, was looking after um, or keeping uh, leprosy patients out of the way. Mm -hmm. uh, they didn't fit in with refugee camps mm -hmm. and all that sort of thing. And mm -hmm. um, the treatment of ordinary people mm -hmm. towards mm -hmm. uh, people with leprosy mm -hmm. was not very mm -hmm. kind and mm -hmm. nice. <laughs> so I had got mixed up with this work. Mm -hmm. Then when I came back through India, I uh, waiting for a, a plane, um, not a plane, a boat. That, that was the chance back. encounter with Gandhi. Yes, mm -hmm. so I met him. Then when I got back to England, I just thought uh, I'd go and see this leprosy mission. Mm -hmm. I went to meet them and they were waiting for an <laughs> sort of with open hands for an architect or uh -huh. a builder or an uh -huh. engineer uh -huh. Uh -huh. to convert all the old uh, homes, refugees, uh -huh. uh, refugees, uh -huh. re refuge uh -huh. is, <laughs> um, into uh, hospitals where people could actually be treated and where they could get surgery mm -hmm. and so on. Mm -hmm. So I came back immediately mm -hmm. to do that specific job. Mm -hmm. But then uh, always, this I think is where I got my love of rural India because mm -hmm. Pa patients uh, and people suffering from leprosy are kept sure. as far away from mm -hmm. the public mm -hmm. as possible. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So many of the homes that I went to, either I would have to walk miles and miles mm -hmm. or go on a bullock cart mm -hmm. or a neck mm -hmm. car or a <laughs> tonga or something like that. Mm -hmm. And um, this uh, got me interested in the whole um, uh, structure of India from mm -hmm. the uh, mm -hmm the very peculiar, no, I mean, mm -hmm. particular mm -hmm. uh, way of living in urban India mm -hmm. and a completely different sure. way for the majority of mm -hmm. people. Mm -hmm. Gandhiji had said to me in, uh, when I was in Bombay, he was having the famous Gandhiji in a talks uh -huh. at that time, uh -huh. trying to prevent partition. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And he'd said, you mustn't think that this Bombay is India, or uh -huh. typical India, you must go into the... Uh, the villages, mm -hmm. and he told me suggested uh -huh. places I should go, because uh -huh. I had three months to uh -huh. wait for a boat. Uh -huh. And uh, he, it was quite true, and it's still true, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. Still, 70% nearly of our population are in very poor rural conditions. Mm -hmm. uh, parts of rural India have mm -hmm. changed, but mm -hmm. uh, there are many that haven't. Mm -hmm. Much of your work has been in, in, in developing uh, low-cost housing for the poor. Uh, uh, do you think this has had something to do with your background as, as a Quaker, the impact of Gandhi, that you have chosen uh, to work in, in, a, in, in perhaps I mean, a less glamorous... So. Uh, no, it, it's not from the glamorous point of view. It's um, seeing these um, extremes, mm -hmm. which I don't think need be. Mm -hmm. I was, uh, this morning I've been to Hudko around the corner, mm -hmm. um, and I was with Hudko for a time on the governing body. And we divided people up then, and still do, mm -hmm. into HIG, that's high income group, mm -hmm. MIG, middle income group, LIG, low income group. Then we don't like to say the poor, so we call them EWS, economically weaker <laughs> section. But I uh -huh, um, uh -huh. was always bringing up the subject very uncomfortably for others. What about the NIGs, the no income group? Um, it was argued that there was no such thing, everybody can and uh, should, <laughs> and, but in fact there are comparatively no income group people. So um, I just didn't want to waste my time, uh, not waste my time, that's the wrong way to put it, to, but to uh, spend time 
on middle class and particularly upper middle class who had the money to employ anybody um, architects who like to do that sort of thing and want to do it no, obviously it has to be done but I didn't think I wanted to spend my <laughs> time in that way. Mm -hmm. You know, you um, use sort of LIG and MIG, yeah. and, and these are phrases we, we associate, at least in Delhi, with the most uh, yes. awful group, um, group housing schemes yes. and, and government-promoted housing yes. schemes. Um, have you ever looked at and, and, and worked with, with housing schemes uh, in, in, in large numbers for people? Um, yes, I've tried to. I've done uh, not the very large, but mm -hmm. smaller mm -hmm. groups. Mm -hmm. um, one of the prob the biggest problem I have is that uh, more often than not it's some government scheme, for instance, mm -hmm. and almost invariably the powers that be who are um, promoting the thing and providing the money for the thing, um, they just want a prototype plan. Mm -hmm. and uh, they want to s a block, a, a plot of land. They divide up into uh, squares mm -hmm. with little roads and uh, mm -hmm. little square plots and mm -hmm. boxes in mm -hmm. straight roads. Mm -hmm. Well, my feeling is that um, uh, rural people, poor people, slum people are just the same as the rest of us. Uh, one family may be a man and his wife and a child. Mm -hmm. Another family may be, <laughs> be a man and one or two wives and the grandmother and an unmarried <laughs> sister <laughs> and all their children yeah, and so yeah, on. Yeah. So why give them the same? Mm -hmm. And uh, particularly in slum areas, mm -hmm. you find that there are different communities. Sure. They've separated sure. themselves sure. up sure. and they live in a different way. I mean, they use mm -hmm. their property such as it is, even if it's only a, mm -hmm. a house mm -hmm. 10 feet, mm -hmm. a shack mm -hmm. 10 feet square. Mm -hmm. They use it quite differently from uh, another group only uh, 20 yards away. Mm -hmm. So I don't see why we should uh, give. Uh, mm -hmm. So when I fight this uh, idea of the mm -hmm. prototype, mm -hmm. one plan for every, you sure. know, uh, there was one only two or three years ago, um, where the idea was that I think uh, we, the Prime Minister then was aiming at a million houses. Mm -hmm. And um, the, um, he, <laughs> when I saw him after we'd uh, tried to get the scheme moving, he said, well, what's holding up? So one of the problems is land. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, he said, land? <laughs> There's <laughs> lots of land all over the place. Uh -huh. But then it's no good giving people any old bit of land. It must yeah. be work that they can cultivate or mm -hmm. get work. Mm -hmm. If it's wasteland in India, it means it's no good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Any land that can be cultivated mm -hmm. or used mm -hmm. in some way or other is already mm -hmm. being done so. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then the other one was money. Money? Money? There's lots of money. <laughs> <laughs> and so uh -huh. I said, you have uh, suggested that we can, this is only three, four years ago, mm -hmm. Um, we can build for 9,000 a house. Mm -hmm. So I said last week, or two weeks ago, my refrigerator expired and I had <laughs> to get a new one. It only cost me 12,500. Uh -huh, and uh -huh. I'm supposed to build houses for 9,000 uh -huh. instead of 12,000 uh -huh. for a fridge. Uh -huh. So it just uh, uh -huh. isn't reasonable. Uh -huh. And why give everybody 9,000 if there are 10 people in one family and two in another? Sure. Surely that should be somehow or other uh -huh, balanced. Uh -huh. But that 9,000 is, is, is fairly close to a, <laughs> an almost legendary figure of, of 10,000 that you built uh, amongst your, your early houses for, for the poor. Oh, yes. Ah, but then you see, sure. 20 years ago, 10,000 now would be, uh, well, <laughs> five lakhs uh -huh, or something uh -huh, like that. Uh -huh. No, it, I mean, uh, I think the first houses, two houses I built for the Archbishop in, um, not for him to live in, but mm -hmm. uh, in Trivandrum. Mm -hmm. One cost 3,500 mm -hmm. and uh, he brought the chief engineer and the chief secretary uh -huh. to see these houses, this <laughs> house, and the chief engineer said, how much? <laughs> and I said uh, 3,500 and uh, the Archbishop has kept the accounts and paid for it. And then he said, and how many square feet? And I've forgotten what it was. Uh -huh. He said, our service charges alone would cost <laughs> that. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> and uh, then a whole group of people, a committee, came along and they said, this is too good for the poor. Uh -huh. So then I did another house next to it for 2,500. <laughs> 
But uh -huh. um, again, um, of course, that, uh, sure. as I say, that sure. is when not before 1970, 1960. Sure. Well, we'll get back to this this, yes. this question of what what has attracted you and, and, and well, kept you in India. <laughs> this this infinite uh, scope. What uh -huh. I then you know can't <laughs> stop. I'm 82, but uh, <laughs> people say, why don't you retire? But uh -huh. how can you when there's all this sort of uh, uh -huh. uh, thing going on? Uh -huh. uh, but I do build, as you know, for. Um, Top Dogs, uh, yeah, for instance. Yeah, yeah. Um, a very good example, the man who was the um, uh, senior most man, the head of the ISRO, or mm -hmm, BSSC mm -hmm, at mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm, Trivandrum, the mm -hmm, space mm -hmm, rocket station. Mm -hmm. uh, he asked me to build his house, mm -hmm. but he wanted it using all these uh, cost-reducing sure. techniques sure. and avoiding uh, sure. excessive energy-intensive sure. materials and so on. Now, and I did it quite willingly because I knew that if he did it, other people, if you have sure. somebody up at the top, sure. other people. Sure. I don't think I've hardly ever been without people from BSSC. Of course, sure. they've got five, six thousand sure. uh, workers sure. there sure. Um, coming right from drivers, peons, mm -hmm. up to the top scientists. Mm -hmm. So it's well worth it going for the top dog first. <laughs> the same with Dr. K. N. Raj, yeah, the, uh, sure, who started sure, the um, Centre yeah, for Development sure, Studies. Sure. I think now all, nearly all the young men, uh, the people who were young men when we started <laughs> in uh, 1970, uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. now they've acquired land immediately in around the center and I built houses. All of them have come to me for houses. You know, the proverbial relationship between architect and client yes. is, is, <laughs> is a tumultuous one and, mm. and, and usually you have a, a dissatisfied, frustrated client <laughs> tearing his hair out. Uh, how have you managed to keep your relationship <laughs> different? <laughs> well, for one thing, I choose my clients. I mean, if, <laughs> if I know he's a hair tatter, uh -huh, uh -huh. Um, then I think I'd say, I think you'd better go to uh, somebody else. Uh -huh, you know, uh -huh. you. I've only been let down two or three times, uh -huh. only, uh, where people have come and said, please, Mr. Baker, we want your sort of building and so on. Uh -huh. And um, one of the things I don't do uh, or I should put it the other way. This, my uh, main system is to say, what is it you actually need? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then, uh, if I can give them that for the, and how much money have you got? <laughs> <laughs> if I can do that, and uh, are we missing out anything that you really want? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, um, uh, when they say, what do you mean, need, and uh, there's the space, and right. how much you uh -huh. use for a bedroom, uh -huh. and uh, how uh -huh. people uh -huh. use a bedroom, whether they right. just go in and sleep and come out right. again, right. or whether they do their typing and right. their knitting uh -huh. and their uh -huh. and all the rest of it. You know, people say that they want their heads facing north and, yes. and what have you. Um, do you, is, does Vastu have any sort of bearing and significance to your work? It's, I've never um, found, I've never been able to, um, What's the word? Accept it wholly. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of these traditions, not only Vastu but others, uh, have um, a, uh, a reason behind them. Mm -hmm. But um, of course, more and more, particularly in your in urban areas, it's mm -hmm. extremely difficult to uh, mm -hmm. follow it. Mm -hmm. If you must have your entrance in the southwest right. or east or right. whatever it is. Right. And the road is over on the north, uh -huh. <laughs> northwest. Uh -huh. uh, what do you do about uh -huh. it? Do you uh -huh. have a tunnel underground and uh -huh. come up on the uh -huh. other side? So it's very difficult to follow, uh -huh. and not many people um, in the present uh, sure. age uh -huh. uh, are particularly interested. But again, uh, one of the top dogs who I've mentioned, it was rather amusing when I was doing their house. Um, I'd finished all the walls and everything, and the rooms were there, and starting on floors and uh, electrification, things like that. And one morning, he and his wife were there, and they said, Laurie, um, I'm afraid we can't have the work area, you know, uh -huh. the place outside uh -huh. the kitchen. Uh -huh. We can't have it here, we want it over there. Uh -huh. And I said, but uh, how are you going to get there in the uh -huh. during the rains? Uh -huh. This uh -huh. is Kerala uh -huh. with uh -huh. heavy driving rain uh -huh. and so on. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Anyway, we can't have it here. We want it over there. Uh -huh. 
and I tried to reason with them, but uh, you know, it would be very inconvenient. And when you want to do this, sure. Brum, brum, sure. Brum, <laughs> and, so on, and then bring it all the way back. And at last the wife said, this is from out the, one of the top scientists in the country. Uh -huh. um, his wife said, I'm sorry, Laurie, but you have to take it from me. The grinding stone cannot look at the fireplace. <laughs> 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 so uh -huh. I thought this was a, a rather extraordinary, and the poor scientist didn't know where to <laughs> put himself. But uh, probably there's a good reason for it. Uh -huh. If you've got a, you know, a pot of uh, boiling oil for making right. puris or something, uh -huh. and there's water nearby, and right. some water gets in, sh the right. whole thing goes right. up in right. flame. Right. 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 So uh, th there must be reasons for uh -huh. this, uh -huh. quite apart from the, uh, the mystical uh -huh. sign of it. And, uh, you know, 50, 55 years of, of, sort of, of, of being in India and, 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 and watching mm -hmm. it change, and, and, and inverted commas, develop, uh, and it's the 50th year of India's independence. Uh, how do you feel? Do, do you despair at the way India has evolved? Do you, do you feel good about it? Oh, well, there's plenty of good about it. Um, and there is a certain amount of development. But I still think the emphasis at the wrong end. Uh, to go back to the HIGs, far too much for HIGs and very, very little for NIGs. Um, the other thing is this, um, it's not only the cost that I'm concerned about, it's this whole question of energy, um, meaning fuel. Mm -hmm. And almost all the things we use in the modern world <laughs> are in some way or other energy intensive, all our vehicles, things like steel. We've got um, mountains, endless quantities of iron ore. But to convert that into quality steel, we haven't got the energy. 82 years young, what, so, you look, what do you look for for the rest of your life? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say another 82 years. <laughs> well, um, good luck and thank you very so much. It has been a privilege having you on this program. So, thank you.